Hey everybody, this is Rachel from Cyber Sports Network. I'm here with Spooky from Team Spooky. He's the main streamer for the fighting game community, a very familiar face if you watched any of their major broadcasts. Uh, and now you're here at Winter Brawl, so uh, you're running the stream, of course? Yes, um, I'm running the main feed. There's also a secondary feed run by the 8-Way Run crew, but I have um, sh the main 2D game feed, which is Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom 3 primarily. So for people who may be unfamiliar of your involvement, how long have you been doing this for the community? Um, well, I originally started uh, capturing footage in about 2006. Um, at that time, streams weren't as big in the uh, fighting game community, although they were a little bit bigger in the PC community. But um, so back then, I carried like a DVD recorder with me, and I copied a lot of the footage, and we just put it out on YouTube, and that went really pretty well for us. So eventually, streaming became more of the big thing, and it was pretty easy for me to convert my capture process into a stream. So that's essentially how we got started. The fighting game community is very proud of uh, its sort of grassroots feel and um, the idea that, that you all sort of grew up from the community. So you were, were you a player before you started the streaming? Did you just kind of switch over or did you come in as a streamer? Well, um, I still play actually. I got f fifth place in the team tournament for Good Marvel shit. along awesome. with <laughs> a couple other people. But yeah, I'm, I'm primarily a player also, which is why I was always so interested. But the real reason I got into it was because on the West Coast, especially in California, there were already a few guys that were streaming. And, you know, they had big events and that sort of thing. But the East Coast, I felt, really didn't have enough representation. So since I'm from New York and I knew a lot of the good players, that's what made me say, well, I want to, you know, also have a big stream and see how it goes. So. Well, now you fly around everywhere and do the stream. What are, what are all the events that you've worked the stream for? Um, well, pretty much. I've, last year, I worked almost every Evolution tournament season event, and Evolution is the biggest fighting game event every year. Also, um, myself partnered with iPlayWinner. We're the main feed for Evolution this year, although they had a, couple, a few other people there as well. So um, our coverage, as far as major fighting game events goes, I would say we cover 70% of what goes on in North America. We also cover some of the Canada tournaments as well. So. And what would you say uh, is your role in the community? Aside from streamer, you have a, a very public personality, so uh, you get to influence a lot of the, the very public ideas of the community. Where do you, uh, where do you sort of stand um, in some of the major issues? Well, um, as, as far as how that, how that goes, I like to kind of present what I say as my opinion and just show uh, everything as is. And that's why our stream is very raw and it has a, a really you know, raw feel to it. I allow people to curse. I allow pretty much anybody who I know is a personality in the scene to jump on the mic and possibly commentate a match or talk to me or talk to the other commentators and talk about what's going on in the scene. So um, based on that, basically, I want to present what really happens at the tournament, whether it's people jumping around or going nuts or fights, or any, anything that happens, I want to present directly. And that way, people can kind of judge the scene on their own and say, well, this is what it is, you know what I mean, whether they like it or hate it. So. Now, as far as uh, ideas that you yourself interject into the scene, one of the things that we've heard over on the esports side is uh, fighting games aren't esports, and you guys see a, a big separation there. Now, I'm not trying to mush you together. I'm not trying to keep us apart either, but I want to hear uh, your reasoning because I feel like you stand on the other side of the fence for me and that you'd rather not see these sides mingle at all. Okay, well, my personal opinion on esports is that esports is kind of a very generic term, and the term itself is kind of what starts this rift in the first place because esports kind of implies like, oh, well, there's money involved, you know, there's like stringent contracts, and there's ways that things work. As an example, I don't know if they still do this, but MLG at one point um, had a policy where if you played in the MLG tournaments, then you weren't even allowed to play in community tournaments. I don't know if that's still even out there anymore, but that's yeah, that okay. Got that's an MLG voice in the background saying it was never part of the contract. Okay, got you. All right. Well, that that's an example of a misconception that people have to to show you an example. So be, uh, that is kind of a part of it where people feel that they're um, that they are. Uh, how could I explain? Like you know, they feel that here's the big like media juggernaut that's coming in, they just want to make money off the scene or whatever, and these guys are very protective of what they do because a lot of these community tournaments are homegrown. For example, uh, th this is Winter Brawl number six, but uh, and the NEC, which is uh, Big Eric's main tournament, has been running for like 12 years or something like that. And final round, which I'm going to be doing next month, is up to final round number 15 now. So these are things that the community essentially grew on their own. So they're very afraid of working with other people because they don't want to see what they worked so hard to create get destroyed. And I think that's a part of what creates the rift. Again, um, people are very excited for the idea of big money tournaments and sponsorships. Even our community players, a lot of guys are sponsored by Mad Cats, which is one of the biggest companies in the scene. You know, guys are sponsored by other, you know, other companies as well but you know the biggest thing is again they don't want to see what they created basically get broken down and that's really why they're so protective of it
So what steps do you think some of these esports brands could start to take uh, if they did want to incorporate the fighting game community most comfortably? Well, um, the big, the biggest issue, and, and again, I don't really want to get into the politics of it. The biggest issue is if um, if MLG or if any of the other big leagues really wants to get into the fighting game scene, they have to get Street Fighter 4. It's the main game, the most important game, and I understand that there might be some roadblocks to that or whatever. But um, uh, you know, that's not really my business. You know what I mean? I feel that's really up to MLG and Capcom and whoever else to really sort out the issues and really get it working so that everybody's happy and content. So with me, you know, again, my job is really to just kind of handle these community events. These are the primary guys that come to me. Sometimes I do get bigger events. For example, Performance Design Products had the big $10,000 Mortal Kombat tournament, and that was more of a money tournament, but they still asked me to come stream it for them, and I, I enjoyed the event. I thought it was a great event, and I mean, it was very exciting, but that's the main thing is I feel that it's really not really my job to, to say how this should all work. My job is to just represent the community and say, hey, you know, this is the concerns that people have and this is what they want to see happen. I think that's very fair. I'm glad we finally got a chance to, to sort of sort that out because there have just been some ideas floating around. Is there anything else you'd like to add or anything else you'd like to make sure people know uh, before we wrap this up? Not really. I mean, the main thing is that I don't want to see people necessarily opposed to the idea of the companies coming in. For example, I would love to see Capcom themselves directly sponsor more of these events because um, these events do, I feel, sell the game for them. For example, Marvel 3, when it first came out, we had Final Round, which is a huge event, and there's a video right now. It's 400,000 views on YouTube of uh, Marn versus Combo Fiend, which is a very popular match. And that match, I feel it is a part of the scene and a part of the reason why Marvel 3 became so popular. So in the same way that the other scenes, for example, StarCraft and League of Legends and all these other games, the same ways that the other, that the actual companies that make the game come in, whether they put pot bonuses into the tournaments or whether they organize their own tournaments, I like to see more of the fighting game companies do the same. And I feel that's the true esports concept essentially, and that's what's going to make everybody work together. If Capcom comes in and says, hey, you know, we're going to have, whether it's at MLG or it's their own league or whatever, else so they come and say hey we're gonna have this big tournament or hey we're gonna you know sponsor everything number one it helps promote their game of course and number two you know it helps stimulate the scene which is really good so and cross assault which is the big show that's coming up next week I think yeah i was gonna it, say it is is a part of that and i think it's definitely you know something in the right direction hopefully cross assault goes well and capcom enjoys it and says hey we want to do more stuff like this whether or not i'm involved it doesn't really matter to me so yeah, that is uh, exciting. I did want to touch on the fact that Capcom uh, is involving itself in one way in the competitive gaming community and really embracing this, this cross-assault thing, which is kind of um, a new idea for the fighting game community. So how, um, I know they contacted you, you guys are working together on that. Uh, how did that brainstorm kind of kind of start up? Was it on their side or your uh, side? Uh, um, I, I don't really know the full details because um, I Play Winner is the main group that actually negotiated this. But my understanding is that Capcom said, hey, we have this new game coming out, Street Fighter Cross Second, and we want to have essentially a reality show from the scene about this. So I understand they approached a few other guys first, including Sony, and then they weren't really satisfied with the ideas I got thrown around. They said, okay, well, we're going to pick some people from the scene and see what we can do. So they I, they spoke to I Play Winner and Haunts immediately contacted me and said, hey, Spooky, you know, we're trying to work on the show do you think you can help so that's really how I got involved with it so my job really is to do what I do at all these other events which is hey I'm gonna stream cross the soul and present this as you know as like a real raw like show and see how people enjoy it but um you know so so from my standpoint it's like hey if it works good that's great I'm sure everybody be happy if it doesn't work out so well then I'm a little concerned that maybe they won't want to try the same thing again but I'm gonna try my best to make it something interesting that people will want to see so well, people love to watch your stream. You can catch it at uh, Twitch TV slash Team Spooky, and those O's are zeros. Is there anywhere else you want to have everyone keep up with you? Um, well, you can find me personally on Twitter at twitter.com slash Team Spooky, which is the main way that, um, that I tend to give smaller updates about what's going on. Most of the major updates are presented on like Event Hubs or Sure You Can or iPlay Winner, which are the big fighting game community sites. But if you want to see what I'm doing personally, just hit me up on Twitter. So Awesome. Thanks so much for talking to us, Spooky. And this is Rachel, and we're Winter Brawl number six. Thanks for watching.